All right. Delighted to be here today, um, and I have an official new title, which I get to talk about, uh, which is uh, Product Marketing Director for Mixed Reality. So I've gone from new device experiences to actually formally owning um, mixed reality as a category. Um, it is delightful to be here today, um, least of which is when I walked in, I got to see the front cover of the Wired magazine um, where uh, Sachin Adela is featured on the front cover and is talking about some of the big business transformations and focus areas that we are focusing on. Um, mixed reality is very much called out as the future of computing. That is one of the main uh, core areas um, of the business. And I had the opportunity about three or four years ago to see HoloLens uh, for the first time before it was actually announced. And it was at that moment, my very first experience, where I realized the potential impact in terms of a generational technology change, where I actually said, um, and I say this out in public for the first time, but this is the only thing I want to do for the rest of my career. Um, and it is, is, to me, tremendously exciting. And if we go back about um, why we believe this is so um, impactful, you go back a couple of generations, kind of 50 years ago, and we know the impact in terms of what happened with the personal computing and PC revolution that came in, a PC on every desk. We take that so for the norm, but we know how important it was to really kick off what we could do around democratizing technology. You then take that further to mobile phones, and my favorite story is when I was a teen, my mom had one of those really big Motorola phones. Does it, has anybody in the room had one of those big Motorola phones that were in the car? Show of hands, nobody. My mom, a couple of people. So those ones, it was so frustrating at the time because they were big. You would have to plug them into the car jack. You um, maybe got 10 or 15 minutes of battery power. And it was really, really expensive. And businesses mostly used them at the time before it would actually become the manifestation of what we know today, both from a form factor perspective, but obviously in terms of the applications and the experiences. That took 25 years. And now we've got kind of all sorts of um, new user interfaces, whether that be touch and the number of times that you'll go into a business meeting, see a beautiful 50 inch LED TV or OLED TV and see thumbprints or fingerprints and exactly, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's because we expect to be able to see that. My friend's seven year old was caught talking to the microwave saying on, start. Couldn't understand why it just didn't work. So the thing that I get really excited about when I think about the first experience that I had with HoloLens was the fact that it actually stands on the shoulders of all of the technologies that have come before it. It's the computing power. It is the mobility of the form factor. And it's also really breaking barriers in terms of the way that we interact with technology. We're no longer in the future is it going to be through screens. Not in the same way that you kind of have to look and then interact and tell a computer what you want it to do. That is very much changing and changing at a pace. Alex Kipman, technical fellow. Um, our journey um, from a mixed reality perspective has actually, and, and Satya talks about this in the Wired article, it's been in the works for decades because it does stand on the shoulders of the technologies that has come before it. Alex Kipman is our founder of um, the Connect Technologies, and he talks about this as really being the inhale, um, the starting point in terms of where we see the manifestation of HoloLens as it is today in a development kit or commercial edition. This is not from a consumer perspective at this stage. It's still very early on. And as I mentioned before, our company is very much um, betting on the future of computing and we're making a tremendous, and we have made a tremendous amount of announcements over the last few, um, well, last year and a half and, and over the last couple of months. But for those of you who aren't aware of exactly what mixed reality is, I'm gonna ask the team to play a video just as a starting point to give you a sense of some of the use cases that we've started with.
So visiting NASA was my particular highlight a couple of months ago because um, I had the opportunity to go to the space cross spacecraft assembly factory, um, which I got to see them using HoloLens to be able to actually sh um, do prototype and designing um, and hear about, there's got about four or five different projects on the go. But this is retail, so I'm not gonna talk about NASA, I'm gonna actually get into talking a little bit about what customers, and particularly over the last um, two years, how businesses have been asking me the types of questions and what they're looking to solve for um, using this type of new technology. And ultimately, it really comes down to some pretty common real problems that businesses face. How do you speed up time to market? How do you reduce costs? How do you increase the collaboration in the organization so it's operating effectively? And then how do you increase your ability to drive better sales engagement and customer engagement. And through this, there's a number of new technologies that are in the market. And in fact, and we talked about this earlier, um, it's actually technology is going at a pace. And although the core common problems are there to solve, what we, and we've talked about a lot of these today, there are absolutely new technologies that are making it, I think, very, um, transformative in terms of an opportunity, and some organizations are getting it, and some industries are getting it, and some are having a little bit more of a challenge. But I'm gonna put this into perspective in terms of HoloLens for a second. I'm gonna use a bit of a fictitious example of a grocery store. And if you think about within a grocery store, before you even start, if you have a 100,000 square foot facility that you're about to create and about to invest in, those are hundreds of millions of pounds of decisions to be able to make. What if you can envision what that store is going to look like before you actually break ground? See it alongside the architects and with the contractors beforehand. What if you are able to actually create where the aisle's going to go? What is the space, space layout going to look like? Aisle seven or aisle eight? Should we really configure that with pet foods on one side and you know, canned goods on the other side? Or are we just doing that because that's kind of what we've done before and that's kind of the best that our data and analytics can do? Because I'd argue a lot of the online capabilities we have in ad tech and e-commerce have been there for a long time on the online side, but physical environments, we haven't had great data and analytics. So what if you can now go into a specific area of that, um, virtual store before you've even made it. And then you can, you can actually create the categories. You can go down onto a shelf and decide which potato chips should go next to which potato chip brands. And then you can go to your suppliers and say, hey, we know because we've got data and empirical evidence through heat map tracking. While we haven't even put a single physical thing into that environment, we've been able to do heat map tracking with real customers in that environment, get data, statistics, and analytics to help inform those decisions. So that's what you can do today. And it brings in all of the technology capabilities around AI, cognitive analytics, um, and cloud infrastructure that all fits to make that happen. Because ultimately, what HoloLens is, is it's a really great new interface to visualize, but it's the technology that sits underneath that that brings it to life. So what is mixed reality? Mixed reality is a vision that basically allows us to be able to interact the, within the real world and put any, insert any digital object, people, place in any configuration that you want it to be. So in the case of HoloLens, for instance, which is a very transparent design, there's one outside that I've seen, I haven't seen the demo yet, but I would be able to see everything around me and wearing a HoloLens, I could, desert, I could insert any digital object into this environment. In fact, we could all be wearing HoloLens and we could all see that digital object. In fact, we could bring people from China into the conversation and San Francisco there could wear HoloLens and they could be able to see that digital object and interact with it. Sorry, I should have clicked one more time. So they're having a multi-lens uh, scenario with our HoloLens um, there. But the other thing that we have announced, um, and actually we've just um, got on pre-order and we will be launching um, for consumers on October the 17th, so just in a couple of weeks, 
are our consumer headsets. These are more immersive headsets. The thing that's really interesting about these, we've got the likes of Samsung and Dell, Acer, HP at consumer price points. So these are, um, are very real and imminent. They're not HoloLens in terms of transparency, so they're a lot more of what you'd see for immersive, but they have inside out tracking already on the device, meaning that there's no setup and you can interact um, very well with this. So we're really delighted with this, um, a huge, huge focus for us going into the holidays with our consumer devices, offering a whole spectrum for us and our developers. But I'm gonna come back for a second to talk about um, HoloLens and some of the retail use cases. And I'm gonna go back to my um, example in terms of my uh, grocery store. Hands up. Heads up, hands free. Make sure I get that in the right order. The ability to be able to walk down an aisle and be able to have your supply information and see any information that will help you to be able to go through the aisle and maybe pick and be able to also Skype in to other people to show them what you are seeing. So that is real flexibility. The ability to be able to do data visualization, just like I talked about around that heat mapping seeing where consumers are looking, being able to see any form of data in a very 3D way. Spatial mapping and planning. The HoloLens will map out this room and then you can insert objects into this environment to put the couches in certain areas and the furniture, whatever you want to put in there. That's very important from a space planning perspective. The remote collaboration. Going back to if you are designing something and you have people that you want to work with, Having the ability to be able to see the same thing allows you to be able to prevent major errors, to be able to make sure that you're talking about the same things. Being able to do that across both within your office, but then with people that are around the world is incredibly powerful, helping to save time, reduce errors. 3D modeling and product design, exactly as Matthew was saying, which is the ability for you to be able to create your products, see them in 3D, and then be able to bring that together. Very, very important um, in terms of the new capability and then training. Any of the types of training scenarios of teaching retail staff, for instance, on how to talk about a product. This is what happens. We were having dinner last night. It made me think about category <laughs> branding going wrong, packaging decisions, things that you should be able to solve in advance. Uh, wank you, Veg. I spent the last couple of years in fast-moving consumer packaging goods. I know what it's like in terms of timelines. Very, very difficult um, to go through and to not be able to see something in its full packaging. You see it flat. You might make, there aren't necessarily the tools. We can provide better visualization tools to do that. So that's a bit of an afternoon joke. I'm going to go a little quicker through some other case studies high-end luxury goods, Volvo, being able to take an experience with a very high-end car, they call it the soul of the car. It is safety that Volvo's number one selling asset is, but it's really hard for them to show the soul of the car. The ability to be able to do that and guide somebody through that, showcase how they've designed meticulously from an engineering perspective, to ensure the safety of the family and of the driver is so important for them. We then have another example, Lowe's. Of course you should be able to, if you're spending 50,000 pounds on your new kitchen, of course you should be able to see what it's going to look like. What's interesting is, I go back to, it's the other technologies that surround it. They use cognitive analytics whereby they took Pinterest feeds of a consumer found out what they would like, matched it to the back order of their catalog, so that by the time that the consumer went into the store to be able to visualize and choose which colors, they already had a scale of a 90% likelihood that this configuration was the best configuration to start that consumer with, so you enhance the product journey, increasing time to market. And we also have um, Lewis from um, Visor, which is one of our mixed reality partners um, that has just gone through a program who's going to launch a new product at our Future Decode event on October 31st and November 1st. So if you get a chance to be there, you'll be able to see the product for the first time live. But I'll just play the video. Gulf West is a family-run design and manufacturing company that's been in business for over 50 years. As a high volume producer, speed and agility is paramount. And working with Visor and Microsoft HoloLens has allowed us to pave an exciting path to the future. 
The exciting thing about working with Garth West and Coreboard was the potential for their engagement with HoloLens to be incredibly disruptive. And as a Microsoft Mixed Reality partner, Visor was perfectly placed to help them achieve that. In the past, we have been limited to creating 3D products using 2D design tools. The HoloLens's ability to create full-scale 3D holographic prototypes allows our design team to work collaboratively, iterate faster, and improve communication with clients both on-site and remotely. Holograms also deliver significant eco savings. We have a golden rule when we work on innovation projects to ensure we bring the capabilities of the devices and services to the forefront and execute on the business potential. It's exactly what we did with Garth West and it helped us deliver a scalable and viable business solution that they can take forward. Across our entire business, we've invested in digital transformation from cutting edge printing technologies to 3D design workflow. The HoloLens is at the center of this innovation and we're very excited about doing business in 3D. The fastest growing retail businesses in the UK attribute their success to engagement with digital innovation initiatives. Mixed Reality presents an amazing opportunity for retailers to push that innovation further, not just online, but in physical stores as well. And the possibilities are amazing. All right, so I often get the question around, great, so how do, exactly do I get started? Because it feels like futuristic technology, but it's actually stuff that can be done now. So some companies actually have developers in-house, particularly Unity developers in-house that are specializing within 3D modeling. So absolutely an option. We've got partners. We've been doing a lot of work in terms of working with partners on a brand new technology um, to help them to really ensure that they understand the development platform and pass towards that. So um, Visor and Lewis is here today as well. So if you get a chance, feel free to chat with him. Um, we obviously have building with Microsoft capabilities and then we have a number of off the shelf solutions such as uh, SketchUp. Many designers use SketchUp in terms of space layout configurations um, or Skype right out of the box. So um, lots of ways to get started and um, definitely check us out online and feel free to also LinkedIn me. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate your time today.